Hello everyone, Chief Canuck here to talk about the latest episode of Hunt of the Truth, and holy crap was this a big one. If you haven't listened already, I highly suggest you do. Halo fans need to experience this. As always, there's a link in the description to the episode, but let's recap episode 9, Phantoms. The episode begins with Ben struggling to get things organized before the meeting between Oni and the Senators. He has only a couple of hours before Pharaoh was going to hack in and have him present Oni's atrocious secrets and acts behind the Spartan 2 program. While Ben was waiting for Mashak to deliver the files that he was going to present, he recorded a statement from Anthony Petrovsky, the retired ODST. He was going to play this during the meeting. Petrovsky introduced himself and shared what he knew about the Spartan program and described his encounter with the young John 117 and the orders he received from higher ups to never talk about the incident. Ben notes that communications have been problematic lately, especially with trying to reach the outer colonies. Ben couldn't get through to Mashok and the clock was ticking. It was 90 minutes before showtime. When a message did finally come through, it wasn't Mashok with the files, it was Katrina, the childhood friend of John that Ben came in contact with through Ellie. It had been weeks since Ben had talked to her. Katrina told Ben that people are going a little nuts out in the outer colonies. Residents are using Chatternet, protests are forming, and new colonial alliances are popping up. They're preparing to boycott everything Oni and EUG alike. Things are apparently calm right now, but still tense. Katrina explains that she's worried and she feels that she's being targeted for helping Ben. She explains that she's had service interruptions, power failures in her neighborhood, and many files on her own personal computer are now corrupt. She also reports that Ellie is experiencing the same things. Her message ends as it was cut short. Mashok finally emerged with the files and the data to support Ben's case. Data that showed the deaths of all the Flash clones and how they were primarily located in the outer colonies. He also cleared up some police scanner data about one of the suicide incidents. Mishak had previously told Ben that he had found two cases where two kidnapped kids escaped and committed suicide after encountering their still living Flash clones. The police data had information about one of the incidents from the perspective of the responding officer. The officer was responding to a break-in at a family home. This family had a teenage son in a wheelchair that evidently was a Flash clone. The officer later found what he called an identical twin dead in the field after hearing gunshots in the distance. This is a reference to Homecoming from Halo Legends, where four kids escaped Oni in the Spartan program. However, the individual stories of those who committed suicide were only mentioned at the end of the episode. After making contact with their clones, the remaining two escapees used their small arms to commit suicide. Ben figured he didn't have enough time to wrap his mind around this new piece of information and made the difficult decision to not use it when confronting Oni and the Senators. Mashok then tells Ben that once he's done with the meeting, he should get caught up with the events in the Outer Colonies, since the last Hunt the Truth episode has caused more unrest. However, before Mashok could continue, Pharaoh hacked in to cut Mashok off. It was showtime. Pharaoh laid out the instructions and hacked Ben into the meeting. There he saw 12 high-ranking Senators, three out of the six Oni directors, and he saw Michael Sullivan. Before he could react, Pharaoh made his feed live and everyone in the meeting could now see and hear him. Distinguished representatives of the Unified Earth Government and the Office of Naval Intelligence, my name is Benjamin Giroux. I was a journalist hired by Commander Michael Sullivan to do a profile on the Master Chief Petty Officer John 117, and my contract was terminated for exposing a widespread cover-up by ONI on his true origins. Ben, my feed went black. Keep talking, Ben. I had to cut the return feed, but you're still live in the room. I tried to focus. ONI has gone to great lengths to keep you and the public from knowing critical information about the Spartan program, their lack of institutional control of the Master Chief in the Outer Colonies, and the genetic modification of abducted children that eventually became warriors like the Master Chief. What I'm about to play for you is testimony from ODST Anthony Petrosky regarding the Spartan program. While Ben was playing Petrovsky's statement, Sully had messaged Ben. You're out of control, Ben. Last chance to stop. I type back. I can't be a party to the crimes you and the rest of ONI have committed. Not anymore. I'm done. There was a brief pause, and he responded. Yes, you are. You're gonna have to finish up quickly, Ben. They're hitting the hack hard. I can't keep it open too much longer. Senators, uh, for their Spartan program, ONI kidnapped young kids and illegally engineered doomed to die clones to replace them. They kept the children as military property, subjecting them to horribly unethical training regimens and eventually performed dangerous biological augmentations on them while they were still growing. 
This was how they made the Spartans. Half of these children most likely did not survive. I've provided you with files that corroborate my claims as to these egregious human rights violations. I ask you to review them with an open mind. ONI has gone to great lengths to cover up this story, including elaborate fabrications. Up, I've also provided you with clear evidence of this disturbing cover up, as well as audio evidence of the threats I have received in the past several weeks for pursuing this We're information. About to lose this feed. I come forward at great risk to my personal safety, come on, come and my on, come only on. hope is that you will look at the facts and take the directors of ONI and all those responsible to task for these atrocities. Thank you for your time. After ONI shut down their connection to the meeting, Pharaoh gave Ben a rather sinister thank you and left the call. Perfect. Now let's watch it burn. The revolution has started, Ben. And you with a spark. From now on, you're under our protection. Afterwards, the gravity of what Ben had just done began to set in. The first ripple of what he had done came from his bank. Every account that he had anywhere was shut down, deactivated, or zeroed out. He realized he should have cashed out beforehand. Just then, two delayed messages began to arrive. The first was from Mashak. He was obviously panicking as things are hectic out in the outer colonies. He said it was urgent and that he'll be meeting Ben in person in two days. Apparently they couldn't talk over comms about it. Mashak tells him to not call him and just wait until he meets him. Despite Mashak telling him not to call him back, Ben tried, but his call didn't go through. It wasn't a failed call, it was different. It didn't even send the call to begin with. Ben checked his chatternet feed and realized it was full of reports of people unable to contact the outer colonies. Communications between the inner and outer colonies were effectively shut down. The second delayed message finally loaded and it was from Katrina. She was clearly panicking and stated they desperately needed help. However, it's hard to hear her message as the quality was poor and it repeatedly cut in and out. Again, her message ends abruptly. Ben was scared about waiting the next 48 hours in darkness before he would meet with Mashok. However, as Ben continues narrating, he tells us Mashok never showed up, and that was the last he would ever hear from him. With that, the episode ends. Judging by the sinister goodbye and the words chosen by Pharaoh, it seems that Ben may have been manipulated and used by her to further advance rebel intentions and the new colonial alliance by creating a divide and civil war-like situation between the inner and outer colonies, which is ironically the main reason why the Spartans were made to stop the rebels. Now where does the Master Chief fit into all of this? He may have very well have been trying to stop some evil only intentions at the embassy, or perhaps something else. Some of us are still questioning whether or not the Chief actually committed the act. Some believe it could have been a ploy by either side. Some have noted the absence of Blue Team in the photo and the report as the Chief, as far as we know, is still with them since the events of Halo 4 and Halo Escalations the next 72 hours. And with that, that's my recap and the breakdown of this episode of Hunt the Truth. Be sure to share your thoughts and theories in the comments down below. I can't wait to see how this story ends as we have four episodes left, with only two before the two-part season finale on June 14th. As always, thank you for watching, be sure to like the video and subscribe for more awesome Halo news and content. My name's Chief Kanak and I'm signing out.